In this video, we're going to practice taking information about a line and turning that into an equation for a line. And so the big idea of what we're going to do is we're going to take that point slope equation from the first video in this section and just use this to actually get the equation we want. And so the two big things we're looking for here, the first one is the slope. And so no matter what information they give you, even if they don't tell you the slope explicitly, that's the first thing you want to look for. Now, what's the second thing you're going to be looking for? You're going to be looking for a point, just any point, that the line passes through. And so in our equation, that shows up, of course, in our x0, y0. We say that our line passes through the point x0, y0. And once we insert the x0, y0, and the m, we want to do some algebra and turn this into the form y equals mx plus b. This equation is easy to graph, right? This is the y-intercept, and that is the slope. And it's also easy to work with for solving things, which we'll be doing later. So let's take a look at probably the simplest example we can have is that we are, want to find the equation of a line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 5. And so if I'm really stubborn and I want to use the equation y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0, how would I do that? Let's just make sure we can understand this. So the first thing they tell us is they just tell us that the slope is 2, right? So that part's easy. We can enter 2 in for m. But what about this y0 and the x0? Why didn't I use the shortcut? Well, I want to make sure we understand what this y-intercept part means here. Let's think about it. So the y-intercept being 5 tells us that the graph of the function intersects the y-axis at y equals 5. So we know this is a point on the line. We know it has a y value of 5. What's the x value of this point on the line? Well, it's 0, right? At the horizontal axis, it's 0. So we can fill in that information into our equation. And then from here, all we need to do is algebra to get it down to that y equals mx plus b. So how do we do that? First, we want to distribute the 2. 2x two minus 2 times 0 y minus 5, and then we're going to move the 5 over by adding it to the other side. We'll get y equals 2x plus 5. Okay? What about if it's a little bit trickier? Instead of giving us that y-intercept, that nice easy point to use that the line goes through, what if they give us a point on the line? So let's again think about this graph form a little bit. So it's telling us that we have a point at 2, 3, 1, 2, and then maybe up here somewhere and that there's a line with slope 7 that goes through that. So it's going to be really steep. Maybe it looks partially something like that. So let's come back to that equation. y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0. Well, it actually just gives us everything right away, right? It gives us m, tells us it's 7, and even gives us x0 and y0. It tells us x0, the our input value of the point that our line passes through, is 2 and the y value is 3. And so here we're going to do the same algebra. We're going to distribute the 7. So y minus 3 equals 7x minus 2 times 7. So y minus 3 equals 7x minus 14. And then finally, y equals 7x. And we're going to add the 3 to each side and get minus 11. So again, down to that form we want it in. Now, what if they're not so nice to us? What if, they, what if they don't give us that slope? What if they just tell us two points that the function passes through? What do we do then? Well, we still want to keep that first step. We still want to find our slope. And so what do we remember about slope? So let's draw a picture, maybe help us jog our memories. So that if we have those two points, 1, 2, and 3, 8, we can actually find the slope. Right, so this is what the line segment will look like between those two things. But we're actually just looking for that rise divided by the run. We're looking for the difference in y, so m equals the difference in y minus the difference in x for the two points on our line. And so the y values, the output values, it's going to be 8 minus 2 on the top, and the 
input values, the x's, we're going to have 3 minus 1. So we'll get 6 over 2, and we'll get an m of 3. Alright, so now if we come to the y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0, plug in our m, we still need to figure out what the point on the line is. Now we have two to choose from, which do we pick? Well, the answer is we can pick either. I'm just going to pick 1 comma 2 here, but if you go through back on your own and choose 3 comma 8, you actually will get the same final result that I have. And so again, doing the same algebra, y minus 2 equals 3x minus 3 times 1. We're going to add 2 to each side and get 3x minus 1. Now for this problem, I'm just going to tell you that this table is from a linear function. There's another video that you can go and look at that you can verify that the average rate of change does stay constant through these points, but I'm just going to tell you that. And once I tell you that this is a linear function, I want you to find the equation for it. So let's think about our formula. What's the first thing we always want to find? We always want to look for slope. So how would we find slope from here? Well, we can just use that average rate of change formula. The difference in y's over the distance in x's is what we usually write down, right? But what does this really mean? It's the difference in outputs divided by the difference in inputs. So since this is a uh, since this is a linear function, we can choose any two any two points. Let's choose these first two. What's our outputs here? Our outputs are the bottom. So the outputs are the difference in outputs for those two points would be seven minus five. And the inputs would be what's on top, be 4 minus 2. And so we'll get 2 divided by 2 equals 1. Now that's our slope. And so from here, we're kind of in a similar situation to last time. How do we, instead of m, we can do 1. How do we pick our point that's on the line? Well, this table actually gives us four points that are on the line. So again, we can do the same thing. We can pick any one of them. We'll have y minus, I'll choose the first one here, y minus 5 is equal to 1 times x minus 2. Now, finally, the last thing we want to look at is what if they give us some equation that doesn't really look like it might be a line, but they want us to find a slope and intercept. They tell us that it's a line, want us to find the slope and the intercept. Well, this is really just a lot of algebra, and our goal, we want to get it into that y equals mx plus b form. And so let's just remember a little bit of the algebra to do that. The big thing we want to do is we want to move y onto its own side, get everything else on the other side. And that's the first big step. So let's do that here. We'll have 5y equals 2 minus 7 minus 10x. 5y equals, this will be negative 5 minus 10x. And now to get y by itself, like it is in this y equals mx plus b, we have to divide the whole equation by 5. And what we'll get is y equals negative 1 minus 2x. And so our slope here, m is equal to negative 2, and our y-intercept our b is equal to negative 1.